your keyboard looks like this. For the next 30 days, my keyboard will look like this. People say I'm... You type on a keyboard 40 hours a week, 52 weeks a year, forever! except for maybe vacations. This can lead to some major problems, including carpal tunnel, repetitive strain injuries, or just pain everywhere. I often spend time after work days rolling out the painful spots and I can't help but think, will it ever go away or am I stuck with this pain forever? I looked online and a lot of people said that this keyboard can help out with these issues. Will this strange keyboard actually fix all the pain? For the next 30 days, I'm gonna test it and find out. To start this challenge, this keyboard was sent to me from RGBKB and this is called the Soul 3. But first, I had to build it. Done. It's actually really cool. It's held together by magnets. It took me a grand total of 10 minutes to build and it even comes with this cool tenting kit. It sort of felt like Legos, but for adults. All right, time to get started, I suppose. For reference, here's my typing speed on a normal keyboard. Now, here's my first typing test on this new keyboard. Boom. Oh. 35 words per minute. And then I realized this challenge was going to be tough. Everything felt foreign and I had no idea what some of these keys even did. Typing at this speed isn't exactly optimal. Why am I torturing myself with this strange layout? This keyboard mixes two strange elements, the split aspect of it and the ortholinear layout of the keys. Most keyboards come in a staggered layout. This comes from those typewriter days where everything was aligned a certain way to prevent the bars from jamming. When computer keyboards were made, they just followed the same design since that's just what everyone was used to. There's really no reason why a staggered layout's needed anymore. In theory, the perfectly lined up keys are better for a more efficient and streamlined typing experience. Or so I've heard. A split keyboard basically takes a normal keyboard and cuts it right down the middle. But why on earth would you do that? It allows your wrist to be straight and not bend in either direction. This helps prevent wrist pain. Another thing you can do is tense your keyboard, lifting it up from the middle. This lets you improve the position of your forearms. You can also move the two halves any distance from each other to get the perfect width for your shoulders. Basically, split and ortho means better ergonomics, in theory but I'm gonna test it. The first few days of the challenge were really tough. Even common letters such as N, P, M, and C were difficult to press. I knew this was gonna be tough. Making mistakes was detrimental as finding the backspace key and moving back to the home row resulted in my hands getting lost. Anytime a mistake was made, I had to look back at the keyboard to reorient myself. I didn't realize how much brain power and concentration I needed to do basic tasks such as writing a simple sentence. As I developed muscle memory of the new layout, things slowly started to improve. I was typing a little bit faster, I made less mistakes, keys that were originally hard started to feel natural. Then. Something magical happened. After a grueling five days, I felt like my typing speed was mostly back. With 25 days left in the challenge, this was going to be easier than I thought. The breakthrough in typing speed came with a realization. I accepted that I had to relearn everything. So I stopped thinking, I have to touch type or else I wouldn't know where anything is. And that thought completely changed my progress. I started to commit the distance between keys to muscle memory and something clicked.
despite being able to type quickly, there were still issues. I was still uncomfortable. I needed to be conscious of where my fingers were and that led to tightness in my fingers and my traps. I felt everything gets harder from being so tense with focus and frustration. Doesn't that defeat the purpose of using this layout in the first place where it's supposed to fix all of these issues? But at this point, I wasn't ready to give up. This is when I started doing my own tweaks to the keyboard. The first thing I did was swap out the keycaps to see exactly what some of these blank keys even did, but I found out that turning it into a monstrosity of different sets made it easier to see what keys did what, although it was a bit unsightly. I also found that the tending kit that came with the keyboard was too aggressive and it added to my trap tightness. I ended up removing the tending kit and adding in pencils instead dead for a better typing angle. While it wasn't the most stable, it was a lot more comfortable. Typing numbers was also really difficult, but that's when I found out something cool. With the space between the two halves of the keyboard, you could slide a number pad in the middle. And the amount of customization you could do to this keyboard turned out to be pretty fun. You could even fit a cup of coffee or a snack in between the two halves if you like. I'm not that weird, I promise. With that being said, I had to play around with where I positioned the two halves on my table to make it more comfortable. Too far apart and it was awkward and too close together, well, I might as well be typing on a regular keyboard. I found that an ever so slight angle with a little bit of spacing was perfect for me. After really getting used to the split layout and the lined up keys, I was concerned I wouldn't be able to switch back to a staggered keyboard very easily. I've read many forums where people didn't recommend you go all in on a new layout unless you could switch to it full time. I found that if I needed to work on a laptop or use my husband's keyboard, I made a lot of mistakes. I was too used to the split layout and a normal keyboard started to feel foreign. Switching back to a regular keyboard resulted in a lot of typos and slower typing speed. It was a pain and I didn't know how long it would last. Then I found this guy on YouTube called DT. He's been using this layout for a whole year. It can actually switch between the ergo docs and a standard keyboard pretty well. Now that that was not the case initially. Initially, that took an adjustment period. And it's completely comfortable switching back and forth. This gave me hope. I wonder how long it would take me to get to that level. I learned that the brain can adapt quickly and after several disheartening typing tests, I slowly regained the ability to type normally again. But it came with lasting effects. Believe it or not, my typing style is completely different now. I now type with more of my fingers, as being stuck to the home row on the split keyboard made me adopt the more traditional way of typing. Is this a bad thing? Not necessarily. I just didn't start this challenge expecting my typing style to change forever. So, were there any benefits to this challenge? I know I can say a cop-out answer such as the journey is all that matters or blah blah blah. But you probably want to know if you should try it too. I did feel some improvements in ergonomics. My wrist felt less pain and it was a nice change of pace from the usual aches from typing. That being said, it did feel like I made a trade. Instead of my wrist hurting, I felt more tightness in my traps and forearms from getting used to the new layout. I think spending all day typing isn't healthy, regardless of how ergonomic your layout is. And the best bet to reduce pain is to take frequent breaks. There's just no getting around that. I think for me personally, a keyboard that's more in the middle ground between a normal layout and a ortho split layout would be ideal. I felt the split aspect was the main game changer where the ortho layout didn't make a huge difference. Just keep in mind, everyone's bodies are built differently, so you won't know what's best for you until you test it out. I also learned that the brain adapts way faster than I thought it could. Nowadays, it takes merely minutes to switch back and forth between different layouts. Now, this is all QWERTY still, so the challenge might not be big enough. Maybe next time, I'll switch the layout completely, like to Colmac, Dvorak, or Workman. But that's a story for a different time. If you're interested in trying out this keyboard, you can find the Soul 3 on RGBKB, link down below.